of 1984. Then I had a very prospective view for the next 1985 year. And I very much enjoyed the New Year holidays with a great degree. However, reality was not so, not so <laughs> very hard. Turned out to be very hard. Uh, several trials to clone CDN encoded this active molecule that completely failed in 1985. One year. This Taylor laser that if the sequence we determined was wrong, or it might be the sequence of the other proteins co purified with active molecule. Such this doubt in view. Very severe arrangement, <laughs> <laughs> which disturbed my sleep. I couldn't sleep at the end of 1985. So I canceled the trip for the holiday season, due to the arrangements. However, medical check <laughs> I asked my friend, <laughs> show that my arrangement was just hypothetic. <laughs> then I decided Okay, I try again. <laughs> I decided to purify again this molecule, utilizing the newly obtained <coughs> 100 liter of carbon supernatural. Then uh, I obtained several fragments, this time several fragments, not the end fragment. Several fragments of the purified protein and also the partial amino acid sequence of these several fragments. Then for this time, I tried to clone the CDNA utilizing the three probes which corresponding to selected three fragments. I believe that this way would be much sure than the way I previously took using only one probe corresponding to the end term amino acid sequence in 1985. Then, after the eight years very steep climb, it suddenly came into view. At 11 a.m., <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> I never forget. May 15th, 1986, I found only one chrome out of 30,000 chrome, <laughs> so far I did, <laughs> which burned all three probes we used. This, it was just a <coughs> It was not a dream. This is the alpha. That time, I was very much confident that I finally cloned the CDN encoding the molecule, which is called that time BSL2, and previously called as BCDL, which is the alpha factor. So, nucleotide sequence of CDN shows that this will be synthesized as a cancer, consisting of 200 amino acid, and it consists in the material form of constituent 184 amino acid. Then we published the result in November issue Nature 1986. However, you are surprised, maybe because <coughs> Professor Kishimoto very much surprised. The sequence we reported was found to be identical to that of interleukin 1 induced 26 Q double protein reported by Hyman and Fias at September issue of European Journal by Chemistry. And that of interferon beta 2 reported by Dilbert Stein and Michel Weber after October issue in the journal of 1986. This result means that all these molecules are identical. Then, January issue of Science 1988 reported that all can interferon find a new hope because, as you may know, interferon beta 2 was originally identified as a factor which, have, uh, which has a antivirus activity. However, it has been very doubted if this molecule really has an antivirus activity. Therefore, unscientific uncertainties about the role of interferon beta are being resolved as a researcher find that it has numerous activity in the body to be handled. Then, furthermore, Plasma cytoma, hybridoma, myeloma, growth factor, as well as hepatocyte creatine factor, were found to be identical with the molecule. So therefore, the nomenclature meeting, chaired by Dr. Bill Paul, 
which was held in New York on December 14, 1988, proposed the name of interleukin 6 for this molecule. But with a cement factor, hydrogenesis in that so many names. <coughs> so the name of interleukin 6, but known at that time. Then I see a very extensive prospect from the top of the mountain after more than 80 years steep climb since I started to purify the isolating factor capable of inducing non reproduction B cells and also previous having more stop in 1978. Then the, we wished initially identify the molecule which act on B cells to induce immune production. However, molecular chlorine revealed that I6 acts not only on B cell, but also acts on many other tissue and cells. For example, I6 is a growth factor for multiple myeloma or present cytoma. I6 even at all hepatocytes to produce a variety of so-called activity phase proteins. I6 even acts on the hematopoietic stem cells or megacarriocytes, resulting, resulting in the increase of platelet number, or even I6 activates osteoblasts to destroy down the bone, even act on the nervous system to induce fever or cachexia in the patient with uh, tumors. So therefore, I6 not was found to be a multifunctional cytokine that plays all the in the immune system, inflammation, hematopoiesis, in the endocrine and nervous system, and even in the development. So anyway, once arrived in such a dice, we have grown this was not so difficult for us to isolate its receptor in the late 1980s. Actually, that we have grown the CDN encoding as receptor alpha chain utilizing by the expression cloning, which was just introduced by Dr. Brian Seed at 1987. In addition, we have grown the CDN encoding, another signal transducing, very important, service GP130. So it was found that as a receptor consists of two receptors, one is alpha chain, uh, as binding molecule, the other one is signal transducing, GP130. So, in addition, as Dr. Kishimoto told, GP130 is not only a, a receptor subunit for I6, but also signal transducer for other cytokines, such as IL-11, oncosatin M, and so on. So anyway, the view I saw on the top of the mountain was far beyond my expectation. However, this was not the end of the story, but just the beginning. Actually, the patient with cardiac myxoma showed a variety of <coughs> autoimmune symptoms, including hypergammaglobulinia, production of autoantibody, such as anti-DNA and ANA, and increase in acute phase protein, suggesting that cardiac myxoma cell itself, or the product of cardiac myxoma, may be involved in such kind of autoimmune Actually, we showed that I cardiac myxoma cells produce IL-6. This is a first suggested evidence as might be involved in autoimmune phenomena. More important finding came next. We found that a large amount of IL-6 is present in the single